I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage and we're having our monthly tech meet and we're going to be taking apart a Turbo 400 uh, hydromatic transmission. And the speedometer drive tells your speedometer how fast to spin. Not well, it also counts the miles. John's laughing because his odometer we're fixing right now. Very common problem on a lot of these cars, the uh, Shadow 2s and a lot of the Spurs is they have a speedometer. The odometer, it's what they have, okay, we'll just back up. They have an electric transducer here. So in place of the old school cable that goes up to a mechanical <coughs> speedometer, they have like a little generator, pulse generator is essentially what it is. So it's got metal pieces that spin inside a wire winding and it, it creates a, a pulse, a sine wave. And that is sent to an electronic speedometer which interprets it and has a little motor that turns the needle to the appropriate speed. There's a great app, I forget, Speed I think is what it's called. You can get on your phone, I use it all the time to check calibration on speedometers and you just turn it on and the satellite, you drive driving down the road and it'll tell you how fast you're going. Uh, and it's, it's just kind of cool. Just don't get caught holding your phone by a, a policeman. <laughs> so also inside that speedometer, you're going to have your real mileage, and then you have your reset mileage. There's little gears that connect to the system that are made out of plastic. And what happens is with age, the plastic they used back then doesn't live as long as they thought it would. They break. And that's when your odometer stops. But if your speedometer works, everybody goes, well, that's OK. That's a plus, right? I'm not putting mileage on the car and I can see how fast I'm going, so. But I have heard of the DMV contacting people, saying, hey, we notice your mileage hasn't changed. Are you driving this car, right? You keep getting it smog, so you must be driving it to smog places, right? Computers can find anything, can't they? So anyways, that's that. Let me see if I can get this thing out. Once again, I don't have all the tools I need. There it is. Not real easy. Hey, Ronnie, when you get your rebuild kit, do those gears come with it or do you have to order all of them separately? Uh, that's a great question. I have a kit right here. And the answer is no. They are all separate. Here is a kit. Move it over here so everybody can see. It's pizza. So what you get, this is the gaskets, rubber seals, have the rotating rings, that's all these, and the rotating rings are the rings that go between those glands, uh, like on the front pump here. They're called rotating rings because they spin with everything. They're not fixed, uh, and they hold the pressure in the passages. Let's see. You ever try to put clothes on when you're all sweaty? Try these. So, these are rotating rings. So a lot of the kits will not come with the plastic ones, they'll come with cast iron ones. And the really cool ones have a little locking mechanism. They have like uh, keyways that you can twist them a little bit and they lock. So you get your seals, gaskets in that part. This is a bushing. It's usually, the, I think it's the front pump bushing. I think it goes in, I'm pretty sure it goes in the front pump. Um, it comes with a brand new modulator with the special bent hose because the pipe comes down right this way and then you get a, it's pre-bent so it's less likely to kink. Vacuum will cause a hose that's almost kinked to kink all the way and then you don't have any uh, vacuum through it. Comes with a new filter, see the difference in color? And you can even see that this, uh, uh, the paper part is a different color. The other one was black. This one, I got a deluxe kit because of the shuttering problem. I wasn't sure. So it comes with the friction clutches. These are like covered in a oil resistant paper type material with teeth on them. And I also got the steels. Okay, so these, when the clutch plaque applies, it just squeezes and it grabs. So typically when you've got a transmission that shudders and you can feel shuddering, they get hot and they'll get burn spots on these. And, and it's 
This is General Motors. It's pretty economical to buy a kit. And there's that one band up front. And you see this has a very thin lining on it, and that comes with the kit. So this is a deluxe kit, and that's what it comes with. So it doesn't come with Speedo gears um, or any other extra bushings. It only comes with that one, typically, because that's the one that's most critical. And it's inside the pump, if I remember correctly. Is this a GM kit or a Rolls Royce? This is not a Rolls Royce kit. Pardon? Uh, it's not a Rolls Royce kit. It's a GM. If it were Rolls Royce, this would be about $900. I paid for that rebuilt torque converter and this kit $200. And it's General Motors. The only thing really different on these are, are uh, the tail housing. I think that's about it. And then the length of the shaft, obviously, it's got a longer shaft to go through a longer tail housing. Why go to England to buy parts from the source? All right, when they're here. Actually, it's probably made in China, but it's a local transmission supplier. Um, <coughs> this is your speedometer gear. If you have problems with your speedometer, sometimes these teeth, the, the plastic, will wear. It is plastic on plastic. I'll show you when I get that shaft out. There is a little rubber seal in here that you change. Um, I can pop that out right now. When they have a A plastic gear like this, the earlier ones had a metal gear. It was bolted in there with a regular lip type seal that was made out of metal. But this is all rubber, it's just a little. And these, when they're tired, you can see the hole in the center is bigger than it should be. Because it's, uh, and typically I will replace this gear also because this, believe it or not, this rubber against this plastic will put a groove in that plastic. Seems odd, but it will. And then you've got an O-ring on the outside of this. Oh, that needs replacing. Oh, it came out better than I thought. I thought it was hard, but it's flat. If you look at the cross section, it's round on the inside and it's flat on the outside. So that means it doesn't have any tension. Okay, what's next? Now we're going to pull the valve body. I'm going to turn it up this way so I can see it. And I'll show you why later. There's a method to that. There are, there's the detente for the gear selector. This is a little ball or a roller with spring loaded so it holds it in these notched positions. Um, that's held on with one of the bolts. We've got a number. Five sixteenths bolts here that uh, hold it on. So there are what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five sixteenths bolts. And then there are a couple of three or like two, no, three, seven, six. Whoa, would you see that? Mm -hmm. Kind of scary, wasn't it? So this valve body will come off. Get this. Okay, this is, like I said, the brains. Whoa, our servo is broken. There's our shutter. I love, I love to find problems that easy. You see how that plastic got left behind? That's a piston. Okay, so that, <clears throat> that has fluid pressure inside it that's supposed to be held by this ring. It's not supposed to go by this, this part of it. So that is the actual front band apply piston. Okay, that's your front servo. So there's our smoking gun, that shutter I was talking about. That's, and, and it seems odd to me that it wouldn't shutter all the time, but for some reason it didn't. Now these two tubes right here, they go back, remember the governor? It has fluid passages in here. And they, 
connect those fluid passages to this valve body. And one of, one of the tubes has a little filter screen in it. That's, that's tiny. And it doesn't look bad, but I can't see very well right now. And on this, it's the one on the inboard side, just <coughs> for those of you watching. If you forget where it comes out, bad on you. You've got to pay attention. <laughs> uh, 